Welcome friends. Today we are going to make that quintessentially classic Easter breakfast bread, the hot cross bun. Um, and so we're just going to start out, we're going to get right into it. In this bowl I've already got flour and to that I'm going to add sugar. And most of the recipes for this bread are exactly the same in terms of proportions of flour, sugar, milk, butter. Where they sort of really shine and where you see the variation is in the spicing. So in mine I put cinnamon, um, already ground cinnamon, that goes in with the flour and then into this little spice grinder I'm going to grind the spices that should always grind fresh um, and that is cloves, allspice berries, and this mace. Now mace is actually an arrow and it is, um, it is part of the nutmeg seed. This, um, this red part would have actually covered the nutmeg seed. It's removed and it's sold separately. It has a slightly different taste. So that goes in and we're just going to grind that up. So in go the ground spices and then we're going to shave in some nutmeg. Once the nutmeg is in, the zest of one lemon. Now I flip back and forth between lemon and orange um, depending on what I have in the house and sometimes when I'm feeling really crazy I'll use both. Um, so you could use either and really that's up to you. That becomes part of your flavor profile. Now salt and I'm using instant yeast um, and instant yeast doesn't need to be bloomed. It's got a smaller granule um, which means that it will absorb the milk faster, will dissolve faster, and will actually start working faster. And I'm going to put that on the other side of the bowl just to please those people that are afraid of salt and yeast touching, um, which is going to happen as soon as I put the milk in anyway. Now, I've got milk. Um, it's just about body temperature. And I'm going to crack an egg into it. Um, Recipes will vary on this point. Some will say to put the egg directly in here. I like to mix it into the milk just because I feel like it incorporates better. Um, if you have thoughts on that, please let me know in the comments below. So, milk straight in. This is butter and I've got the butter kind of mostly melted. Um, I flip back and forth on this point too. Sometimes I will melt the milk and put it in here and sometimes I will wait and put butter in as we start kneading and incorporate it that way. Um, I found not a whole lot of difference. So we're going to mix this all together. Okay, so this has come together in a sort of wet, ragged mass at this point. Um, and I'm going to turn off the machine and I'm going to let it sit for 25 or 30 minutes uh, before we start the kneading process. Now, I know this isn't a true autolyze rest. And somewhere in France, there's a bread baker pulling his hair out, screaming and yelling. I know it's not a true autolyze rest. But I find that even this type of rest makes my buns better at the end. So, 25 minutes, do nothing. So now we start the process of kneading this to a nice, smooth, elastic dough. And it's at this point you want to add in the fruit. So I'm using candied citrus peel, and I'm just using the yellow one. Um, if you want to use the brightly colored Christmas with the red, green, blue, yellow, feel free, go right ahead. And then you want to add um, any seedless raisin that you like. I'm using currants, because I really like currants. Um, but raisins are great. And I've even seen people put in fresh apple. Um, I've never tried that myself. So in those go. Okay, so what we have is a fairly sticky dough. Um, there's a lot of milk, a lot of butter, and it's kind of, it's not quite like the panettone that we made, but you know, it's pretty close. So normally what I do at this point is just leave it in this mixing bowl and I just cover it and let it rise until it's about two and a half times in volume. Okay, 
doubles in size. Now, um, no flour on your bench. No flour on your bench. The dough is going to be sticky and that's kind of what we're hoping for. So get your dough out onto the bench and we're going to divide it. And each of these 12 balls should be about 100 grams. So it's going to stick a little bit. Don't panic. Um, we're sort of counting on that. So we're going to divide this into 12. Now 100 grams each. Um, you can use a scale, and I have one here just for reference, and I'll usually weigh one or two and then just eyeball the rest. Um, you can make yourself crazy with a scale trying to get each of them 100 grams. Somewhere between 95 and 105, it's all going to be fine. Once they're portioned out and all essentially about the same size, we're going to use the stickiness of the bench to help us shape and form the dough balls. So you just take your hand, you cup it, and you just rotate it on the counter. And the fact that it's sticking a little bit helps us get that surface tension and really help us shape it. So onto a baking tray lined with parchment paper and we'll shape the rest exactly the same way. And so arranging them on the baking sheet is a bit of an art form. You want them close, but not too close. You want them to sort of rise into each other, but not touch too much. And at this point, now I put a little bit of flour on my hand and just pat them down a touch, just a touch. And you just want the flour because they will stick to your fingers. Now I just cover them with a piece of plastic wrap and I don't wrap them tightly. I just kind of lay it on top loosely and we'll let these sit on the counter for about an hour or so until they're almost double in size. So we have reached the totally, completely optional part of this recipe, and that is the cross. Um, if I'm making them at home for just Julie and I, I don't put the cross on. I don't really like fiddling with the flour. It doesn't bring anything flavor-wise to the, to the bun at all. It's purely a visual thing. So if you want to leave it off, go ahead. Um, if you want to put it on, this is just a slurry of flour and water. So flour, water, it's fairly thick. You should use a piping bag. I use a turkey baster because I hate cleaning piping bags and I refuse to use a plastic bag. Um, and so you just pipe on across. These look fabulous. Hot cross buns. Very nice. Conveniently, there's a there's a guide for cutting. A guide for cutting. <laughs> so I took these out of the oven when the internal temperature was about 205 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, a lot of people don't tell you about breads and cakes. You can tell if they're done by temperature. Um, so top tip: 205 degrees internal. And then I. Glaze them with honey, mm. but you could use apricot jam, um, simple syrup, any kind of sugary, glossy coating for the top. That's a pretty good bun. Mm-hmm. Mm. 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 Sugary coating gloss. Mm-hmm. So this is a starting point recipe. By all means, switch up the spices to mm. something that you like. Mm-hmm. You know, if you... Mace is something that not everybody's going to have. No. And if you don't want to go out and buy mace in order to make this, don't. Worry don't. About it. Just Maybe leave, you want it to be super cinnamony. Well, and in a lot of ways, the spicing on this is kind of pumpkin pie spicing. <laughs> don't say it. Uh, you don't know. It is. I mean, really, it is. It's not quite as pronounced, but that's where it is. And then the same with the fruit. If you want to switch up the fruit, put in other dried fruits if you want them. Um, by no means think that you have to stick to tradition. Um, and, you know, like I said, if you want to leave the crosses off, leave the crosses off.
You could do happy faces. You could do happy faces. Mm -hmm. Oh, so many things you could put on the top. You could do them in the fall and put in leaves on them. All year round. No longer. <laughs> put leaves on them in the end. Use pumpkin spice. See? Okay. So, <laughs> thanks for stopping by. We'll see you again soon.